Thank you for your interest in the Village of Skinny Atlas Pedestrian Safety and Mobility Study. The Syracuse Metropolitan Transportation Council is conducting this study. This presentation is intended to inform community members about the purpose of the study, the analysis completed to date, and some initial concepts developed for specific locations in the village. SMTC staff will be conducting a live session on Zoom on January 18th to answer any questions you have after viewing this presentation. More details about participating in that session are provided at the end of this presentation. We'll start with a brief introduction to the SMTC. The Syracuse Metropolitan Transportation Council, the SMTC, is the metropolitan planning organization for the Syracuse region, which includes all of Onondaga County and towns within Oswego and Madison counties. The SMTC's role is to foster continuous, cooperative, and comprehensive planning. This includes developing a long-range transportation plan, prioritizing funding for infrastructure, and conducting studies of specific transportation issues at the community level. For more information, see our website, www.smtcmpo.org. So what is a Metropolitan Planning Organization? A Metropolitan Planning Organization, or MPO, is a transportation policymaking and planning body made up of representatives of local, state, and federal government and transportation authorities. The Policy Committee is the designated MPO. The MPO is charged with the comprehensive, cooperative, and continuous transportation planning process for a metropolitan area. The SMTC initiated this study in 2020 at the request of the Village of Skinny Atlas. The project's primary focus is on U.S. Route 20 in the Village of Skinny Atlas, specifically reducing conflicts between pedestrians and vehicles on this busy section of roadway. The New York State Department of Transportation is planning a paving project for this section of roadway in the next five years, which will create an opportunity to alter pavement markings and other key roadway features. This study was guided by a study advisory committee made up of representatives of the village of Skinny Atlas, including the Skinny Atlas Chamber of Commerce, the Town of Skinny Atlas, the Syracuse Onondaga County Planning Agency, and the New York State Department of Transportation. This group met four times with two meetings devoted to a detailed discussion of mobility issues at key locations in the village. At first glance, Skinny Atlas may not seem like a location with a great need for pedestrian planning. There are sidewalks and crosswalks throughout the village, including two mid-block crossings of US-20. Also, Skinny Atlas is an extremely popular destination for tourists, including senior citizens and families with small children. On any summer weekend, large numbers of pedestrians of all kinds and abilities can be seen crowding the village's sidewalks. But just as a lack of foot traffic is an issue in many neighborhoods, the overabundance of pedestrians in Skinny Atlas creates its own problems. US-20 is a busy east-west route that brings heavy vehicles through the heart of the village's shopping district. Conflicts between pedestrians and vehicles are common, with residents noting frequent near misses between pedestrians and drivers. A fatal pedestrian collision in 2020 underscores the need for enhanced measures to reduce conflicts. Traffic volumes on US-20 range from 9,200 vehicles a day to nearly 10,600 vehicles a day, with the busiest segment being the segment between State and Onondaga streets. West of the village, volumes on US-20 drop to 8,300 vehicles daily, and east of the village, they fall even lower to around 7,300 vehicles daily. This suggests that a relatively large proportion of the village's traffic is originating in and or destined for the village, rather than being east-west through traffic. As the village's zoning map shows, the downtown district, shown in red, is clustered around the intersections of State and Jordan Streets with US-20, as well as along Fennel Street as far north as Elizabeth Street. In terms of walkable shopping destinations, the village's central business district is the area between the Westlake and Hannum intersection with US-20, the Jordan Fennel Street intersection, and extends along US-20 to just east of State Street. 
Cliff Park is also an important part of this district. Boat tours launch from this park and, and the seasonal boat dock generates traffic between the land and water. Pedestrian activity is concentrated in the area between the Westlake Hannum intersection and the eastern end of the Central Business District, just west of Lee Jav. The busiest intersection is Jordan and Genesee, which sees hundreds of pedestrian crossings hourly during the summer months. Genesee and State is slightly less active, but more than 80 pedestrians an hour is not unusual in the summer. The mid-block crossing at the gazebo, the gazebo crosswalk, also sees a very large number of pedestrians. While pedestrian activity tapers off east and west of the CBD, there's also Maribou at the western end of the village, which generates pedestrian traffic. East Lake Street is heavily used by high school kids walking back and forth to school, which involves crossing US 20. From 2016 to 2020, there were eight pedestrian collisions in the village. As this graphic shows, the crossing point with the greatest number of pedestrian collisions is the US 20 State Street intersection, which saw four out of the eight pedestrian crashes, including a fatality in the fall of 2020. Historically, more pedestrian collisions have happened on US 20 than on any other single facility within the village. From 2016 to 2020, there were 377 vehicle collisions in the village of Skinny Atlas. Most crashes occurred during daylight hours, and crashes are distributed fairly evenly among the days of the week. Fridays see more than average, with 18% of all crashes, and Saturdays and Sundays see fewer than average, 13 and 10% respectively. 55% of all collisions in the village take place on US 20. Looking only at the crashes on US 20 that are not at intersections, there were 86 vehicle collisions in this period, which is 2.2 times higher than the statewide average for similar facilities. 29% of those collisions were rear-end crashes. 31% were overtaking crashes. Overtaking is a catch-all term for unsafe passing. This is a relatively high proportion of crashes of this type for a state highway. The width of US 20 varies through the village. On either end of the village and in the segment just east of 41A, lanes are a standard width of 11 to 12 feet. Because it is part of the national highway system, US 20 is required to have lanes that are at least 12 feet wide. Elsewhere, US 20's travel lanes become extremely wide, in some segments reaching as wide as 21 to 22 feet for a single lane. Research into roadway design does indicate that wider lanes are generally safer, so two 12-foot lanes are generally safer than two 7-foot lanes. But research also shows that at a certain point, lanes can be too wide. One research paper found that when lanes reached 17 feet wide, they can become confusing to drivers. In Skinny Atlas, these wide lanes may be contributing to the relatively high proportion of overtaking accidents on roadway segments in the village. There are approximately 800 on and off street parking spaces, not including the town lot on Fennel Street. While this is more than enough parking to accommodate the parking demand for most villages in central New York, Skinny Atlas is a known tourist destination with special events that bring in thousands of additional vehicles. The existing parking supply can be overwhelmed during a major event or even on a busy summer weekend. This leads to cars circulating through the downtown town looking for spaces, adding to the congestion. Based on this data and on input from the Stakeholder Advisory Committee members, we developed design ideas at selected locations in the village. Your comments and opinions on these concepts are an important part of the planning process. These are preliminary concepts only, intended to both ensure safe street crossings for pedestrians and improve the flow of traffic through the village. Our study focused on six locations in the village as key areas in which to rethink how vehicles and pedestrians share the public right of way. They are, from west to east, the US 20 intersection with Orchard Road and Kane Avenue, also known as Route 41A, the intersection of US 20 at Westlake and Hanum Streets, the portion of US 20 adjacent to Cliff Park leading up to Jordan Street, 
the segment between Jordan and State Streets, the US-20 intersection with East Lake Road, also known as Route 41, and the Jordan Street intersection with Fennel Street. We develop design concepts for each of these locations. In most cases, we develop more than one variation on these ideas. These are all based on design improvements that have been used in communities around the world to create a safer environment for all roadway users. The key question is, which of these are a good fit for your community? We are very interested in your comments on which ideas seem most applicable to the conditions in your village. We begin moving from west to east, starting with 41A and US 20. The intersection of Kane Avenue and Orchard is the busiest intersection on the village's western end. Kane Avenue is the northern terminus of State Route 41A, a major north-south route along Skinny Atlas Lake's western edge. This intersection is not known as a pedestrian crossing point, but it is known in the village as a source of vehicle conflicts. The overall accident rate at this intersection is 1.7 times higher than the statewide average for similar intersections. But for left turn collisions, it is 7.4 times higher than the statewide average. Village residents report that congestion is common at this intersection especially for northbound vehicles and especially in the summer months. Currently, the only traffic con controls present are stop signs for northbound and southbound vehicles reinforced by flashing red light and supplemented by flashing yellow caution light for vehicles on US-20. Both of the concepts developed for this intersection suggest implementing a three-color signal based primarily on traffic volumes. Both US-20 and Route 41A see sufficient traffic volumes to warrant a signal at this location, which would improve safety for all users. This concept recommends that a signal be combined with pedestrian signals and crosswalks on all approaches. This concept also recommends creating a right turn only lane. Right turning vehicles outnumber left turns and through movements at this intersection by a three to one margin. Adding a right turn lane would reduce delays for northbound vehicles. This concept would also utilize roadway striping to create center medians. A second version of this concept eliminates the center medians and instead uses painted in curb extensions to reduce pedestrians crossing distances and to create a gateway to the village for eastbound vehicles. Moving to the intersection of Westlake and Hannum, the project study advisory committee reported that the existing crosswalk at this intersection has poor visibility and poor driver compliance. Special events at the Sherwood Inn generate large numbers of pedestrians, many of whom gravitate to this intersection to cross the US-20. This intersection is the western gateway to the village's central business district, but it is characterized by wide travel lanes and a diagonal crosswalk that unnecessarily increases pedestrian travel time across the roadway. The key to cutting down on conflicts between vehicles and pedestrians is decreasing the amount of time that pedestrians take to clear the street. Concept one for this intersection uses painted curb extensions and a perpendicular crosswalk to carve out plenty of space for vehicles while minimizing the crossing distance for pedestrians. Painted curb extensions would eliminate a total of nine feet of excess width from the roadway, leaving a standard 12 foot lane for cars and trucks. Painted curb extensions and a reoriented crosswalk would reduce the crossing distance from 56 feet to 24 feet. An optional addition to this idea and to some of the other concepts that will be presented is to use a small raised delineator called an armadillo to augment the roadway striping. These delineators would be installed and removed seasonally but during the busy summer months, they would help reinforce the distinction between the areas for drivers and the areas for pedestrians. Armadillos have a vertical profile of three and a half inches, ensuring that they can be traversed by vehicles when necessary. Delineators like these are often used to help create bike lanes. They are reflective, made from recycled plastic, and able to withstand impacts from all kinds of vehicles. Another way to redesign this intersection is to use some of the excess width to create a refuge for the pedestrians in the middle of the street by way of a striped-in median. 
Again, armadillos would be a useful addition to this design to help reinforce roadway striping for both drivers and pedestrians. The segment of US 20 between West Lake Street and Jordan Street is a busy area for pedestrian movements, particularly at the gazebo crosswalk. On busy days in the village, when lots of pedestrians are using this crosswalk and lots of westbound vehicles are coming from the Jordan US 20 intersection, it is not unusual for westbound vehicles to queue up back to the intersection. This can, in turn, mean backups for southbound Jordan Street, and in some cases, backups on Fennel Street further north. But the block between West Lake Street and Jordan Street is very long. It is 765 feet, and the density of popular destinations on both sides of US 20 in this area, including the park itself, the Sherwood Inn and its parking lot, and the shops on the north side of the road, mean that pedestrians will cross the street here. Good pedestrian planning requires ensuring that people can cross US 20 as safely as possible in this segment of road. Relocating this crossing point further west would take pressure off of the Jordan US 20 intersection. Putting this crossing point in front of a popular destination, such as the Sherwood Inn, makes sense. This photo simulation presents a possible design for a raised crosswalk connecting the Sherwood Inn to Cliff Park. This crosswalk design elevates the crosswalk two to three inches to be at the same level as the curbs. This design requires vehicles to slow down to between 20 and 25 miles per hour, ensuring that vehicles are traveling at a speed appropriate to a village environment. A raised crosswalk makes pedestrians more visible to drivers. Raised crosswalks have been shown to reduce vehicle pedestrian crashes by up to 46%. The added safety of a raised crosswalk may be more attractive to pedestrians, reducing their inclination to jaywalk elsewhere in this segment. Vertical features like raised crosswalks and intersections are becoming increasingly popular as tools to control speeds and reduce conflicts between pedestrians and vehicles. The New York State Department of Transportation recently implemented a raised intersection on Route 787 in Cohoes, a major thoroughfare that sees twice as many vehicles as US 20 and many fewer pedestrians than are found daily in Skinny Atlas. For the portion of US 20 immediately west of Jordan Street, this concept proposes adding two 15-minute on-street parking spaces to provide designated parking for vehicles loading and unloading boat passengers and equipment in the summer months. This concept also proposes using roadway markings to create a center median, reducing lane widths from their extremely wide 23-foot widths to a standard width of 12 feet. Very wide lanes like this encourage drivers to make risky passing maneuvers, which contribute to the roadway's accident rate. In this concept, the inside eastbound lane goes from allowing both left turns and through vehicle movements to only allowing left turns. As in other concepts, this approach could be combined with armadillo-style delineators in the summer months to discourage vehicles from crossing into the striped area. The portion of US 20 between Jordan and State Streets is the heart of the village. It is also the busiest segment of US 20 and the area most likely to attract pedestrians. The largest supply of off-street parking is found on the north side of the road and the village's central cluster of retail shops is found on the south side. The two signalized intersections with US 20 already have some of the best available features for pedestrian safety, such as curb extensions, crosswalks, and signals that are timed to allow pedestrians to enter the intersection before vehicles. Nevertheless, a few additions might improve mobility for both vehicles and pedestrians. For example, there are two mid-block conflict points where risk could be reduced. There are entrances to the municipal parking lot on State and Jordan Streets. The entrance on US 20 could be eliminated and replaced with an attractive green space. Additionally, access to the lakefront parking area by way of the mid-block alley on this block could be reduced to a right-in and right-out access only, eliminating left-hand turn turning movements. Finally, the eastbound travel lane could be simplified by implementing left turn only lanes at Jordan and State Streets. 
This would allow a striped-in median that would reduce lane widths and create a pedestrian refuge on the western end of this block. It would also eliminate the need for eastbound vehicles to merge east of State Street. This merge has been observed to lead to drivers racing one another to the merge point, a behavior that is incompatible with a pedestrian-friendly village. Another option worth considering, given the intense pedestrian traffic seen here in the summer months, is the use of raised intersections at both Jordan and State Streets. Raised intersections signal to drivers that they are entering a pedestrian-oriented setting and give pedestrians greater visibility. The City of Philadelphia implemented raised intersections in Center City to create a gateway to the city's theater and arts district. These photos show an example of a raised intersection in Center City, Philadelphia, at the intersection of Broad and Walnut Streets, part of the city's Avenue of the Arts. The photo on the right shows the very gradual slope of the street at the raised intersection. This design gently brings the street to the elevation of the adjacent curb. In this case, the city of Philadelphia used red brick pavers to improve the visibility of the crosswalks, and the large planters on the corners act as bollards to help define the edge of the intersection. The busiest intersection on the village's eastern side is at East Lake Road, known further south as State Route 41. This signalized intersection is a few blocks south of Skinny Atlas High School, making this a critical crossing point for lots of students. Because of this, eastbound right turns on red are not allowed during weekday mornings and afternoons, and the hours when students are walking to and from the school. Vehicles turning right from the eastbound lane tend to make their own lane at this intersection. Also, large trucks making turns at this intersection often encroach on stopped vehicles. A few adjustments are proposed for this intersection. One basic improvement would be to create a lane dedicated for eastbound right turning vehicles, eliminating the possible ambiguity created by the wide lane width here. Altering roadway striping by pushing stop bars further from the intersection and adding striping to define roadway shoulders would also be beneficial here. The Jordan Street Fennel Street intersection is an active part of the village's business district. The oblique angle at the intersection means that the distance to cross Fennel Street is nearly twice the distance across Jordan, increasing pedestrians' exposure time to turning vehicles. This concept, an idea presented in the SMTC's 2018 Skinny Atlas Multi-Use Trail Corridor Study, would reduce the width of the Fennel Street crossing using curb extensions. The radius of these curb extensions could be designed to accommodate but reduce the speed of heavy vehicles. Fennel Street is wide enough to accommodate both 5-foot bike lanes and on-street parking, although it should be noted that there is very little on-street parking allowed on Fennel Street north of this intersection. Extending the curb on the southwest corner would also reduce the crossing distance for pedestrians crossing Jordan Street. Another idea that the village of Skinny Atlas should consider is the development of a shuttle system in order to make large free parking lots outside the village center more attractive to out-of-town visitors. A free shuttle running at relatively frequent intervals would take pressure off the limited supply of parking in the village's central business district. This would both prevent some vehicles from entering the village's central business district and remove some traffic that currently circles the downtown core looking for good parking spaces. The operation of such a shuttle could be contracted out to a private firm and funded, in part, through a sale of ad space. Thank you for watching this presentation. If you have questions about any of the design ideas presented in this video, please plan on attending the SMTC's question and answer session to be held virtually by way of Zoom on January 18th. Please note that we will not be repeating this presentation at the Q&A session. The Q&A session will be an opportunity for you to ask questions to SMTC staff about the material presented here. You can also forward your comments to Megan Vitale, the SMTC's Principal Transportation Planner, at mvitale at smtcmpo.org. Thank you again.